So we're looking at TTG High Slide Gallery Pro. In the previous video, we went over the header and page settings. In this video, we're going to tackle the menu settings. The menu settings apply to this area of the page. This is called the menu bar, and it's where your site navigation lives. Using the menu settings, you're able to customize the appearance of the menu bar. So the first group of controls are the color pickers. Uh, you can use these to go in and change your colors. I'm holding down my mouse button and I'm going to sample from my second display. Bring some green into my menu. The second color choice is the menu border. Now we don't have a border yet, so I'm going to come down here to these sliders, menu border top, menu border bottom, and we can bring in uh, a bit of a border first on top of the menu bar and then on the bottom of the menu bar. And if you'd like, you can you know, use wildly different settings. I'm going to leave them equal for now. Uh, and once that's done, you can go ahead and change the color of those borders. I'm going to go with this nice olive color. Uh, the menu dividers, you can't really see them right now, but if I make them black, they're a little easier to see. Uh, you can see that between the home and gallery index, between the gallery index and about, we have these vertical lines. So that's what that color picker is for. And if you don't like the vertical lines, well, you can change them. Uh, if you wanted to use, I don't know, slash, you could do that. If you'd like, you can put in words or any other string of characters that you might like to use uh, to separate your menu items. If you don't want anything for a divider, you just leave that blank and hit enter. And then it all goes away. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my vertical lines back in. I'm going to leave them black and we're going to move on to the next color picker, which is for the link color. Now this will affect only the color of the hyperlinks in your menu. Nowhere else on the page. I'm going to make that black and then I'm going to add in, uh, I'm going to make the hyper or the hover color for the hyperlinks this dark gray. Moving down the controls, we come to menu font families. This works just like other font family pickers elsewhere in the control pane. You can choose a preset stack. And then if you'd like, you can modify the font stack, either by rearranging the hierarchy of fonts or by adding other fonts that you might prefer. Uh, the sliders, we can adjust the menu font size. We can adjust the spacing between menu items. So if I do this, my menu is going to become a little more spaced out, which is nice. Um, menu padding top lets you increase the amount of space above your menu items, and menu padding bottom lets you increase the amount of space below your menu items. And then the padding left and padding right sliders we will come back to. Um, coming down here, we have menu alignment. You can set that to the right, left, or center. Text decoration lets you put underlines beneath your menu hyperlinks. And then for font weight, you can choose either normal or bold. I think bold looks pretty lousy with this font, so I'm going to keep that at normal. So this is a standard uh, identity plate over menu bar uh, setup. There are a, color of, a couple of other variations you can use, though. Uh, for example, we can take the ID plate and we can drop that into the header or into the menu. Now what happens uh, when you do that, the header becomes blank. This is no longer a hyperlink, so in the header page settings, this hyperlink target now serves no purpose. Um, and we can use the header height to reduce the amount of dead space we have up there. Now if you want to leave a little bit of breathing room between the top of your menu bar and the uh, browser window, you can do that, or you can just take this to zero and get rid of that space altogether. Um, coming back down into menu settings, we're going to use the padding top and padding bottom sliders to give this uh, menu bar enough space to accommodate the identity plate and look pretty nice. So I just did that with the, the top slider. If I wanted to, I could add a little more space to the bottom as well. And I think that looks good right about there at 10. 
Um, if I want to run that menu bar straight up against the top of the browser window, we've already gotten rid of that header space, but we can also take the top border down to zero. And uh, we can leave the border on the bottom to separate the header from the rest of the, the gallery. So that's how we get the identity plate into the menu. Now, one other variation I'm going to show you actually uses a very different uh, identity plate. We're going to locate the file. I'm going to pull this one out. And what we're going to do with this is run it all the way against the left side of the gallery. Um, now, please note here that I have my fix header width turned on. That way, when uh, we look at the gallery on a very wide screen, it still stays pretty well in line with the thumbnail grid, rather than going all the way to the, to the left side. Um, I'm going to make this a little easier to see. I'm going to change the background color so I can grab that and come up. And I can actually sample from other color pickers. So if I want to get that brown back, I can do that by sampling from the old header background. And we are going to reduce the amount of padding on top. I'm going to make a very narrow header. And then I'm going to set the alignment for my menu items to the left. And what you see happening now is that my menu items are overlapping um, my identity plate, but that's OK. Okay, so I've adjusted my menu padding top and bottom, um, and now I want to get these out of the way. So I'm going to push these over to the left using the menu padding left. And I'm going to set that to about 260, see how that looks. Pretty good. I do want to add a little more space between my ID plate and my, uh, my menu, so I'm going to maybe crank this up to about 275, 280, thereabouts. And of course, if you were working with a right aligned header, if you had your ID plate on the right and uh, your menu aligned right, then you would use the menu padding right slider instead of the left. But uh, that's basically it. You've seen three different variations of header setups and how they can be achieved. And in the next video, we're going to start looking at the menu hyperlinks and talk about how you can set your menu items.